like my own lane is me feeling like people always just ask or have that curiosity of, you know, what is really your direction or where do you want to go with music or, you know, I heard this single, is the rest of your album going to sound like this? And, and you know, those kind of questions, you know, I'm somebody who comes from a production background and, and always try to do so much different type of music that I kind of have an open ear for so much different things. And, you know, I feel like I try to take different lanes and just make them my own more so than go down one single path. As a producer, I think, you know, the first song that I would obviously have to put my stamp on would be uh, Nipsey Hussle's first, you know, record that he released from getting signed to Sony, which was, you know, a record with Bullets Ain't Got No Names, and it was a record that helped him get his deal, because I remember, you know, he called me up like, yo, they just called, and you know, Sony wants to give me a deal off this record, and they want you to come through too, and we all flew to New York and just sat down, and I, you know, made a lot of connections with a lot of people and that's kind of where you know I started and got my first foot in the door and you know really knew that something was going to happen. My first song is Kid Ink was released so long ago I, I, I probably haven't listened to it in years it's called Wait For Me it was just you know a, a fun record that I did um, to get a start, you know, to see how the fans were gonna take me, and I was just being original, and I felt like it was definitely an original Kidding record, and it didn't sound like anything out at the time, and I think that's why people gave me a listen, because with so much going on, and so many people always trying to sound alike, and, and you know, follow the trends, it was kind of left at that time, especially for a mixtape artist, or an underground artist to release a song that sounded you know, a little too commercial. Why isn't he signed and why isn't he releasing this on the radio and not on the internet? So, you know, it was kind of one of those things. And definitely, you know, I felt like it, it kind of held me down for a minute because, you know, I was underground making commercial music at the time and trying to get, you know, radio play and stuff like that independently. And people weren't always listening, you know, to the, the content of the records or, or accepting it as a real hip hop song. And, you know, I think I broke a lot of barriers though. I made the transition from producer to artist. Really just, you know, being a producer, I felt like it's more than just making beats. It was about, you know, writing hooks, coming up with ideas for the artist too and making it easier on them. Some people, you know what I'm saying, like ghost writers. And even if you're writing, you know, R&B or pop music and for a singer, you might be writing a whole record for somebody. So for me, I was always in the writing to try to help my production and try to sell beats. Cause that's, you know, my favorite producers were doing the same thing. and. From there, just growing a love of writing and, you know, f just spitting on records and, you know, not really concerning like, oh, this is, I'm about to try to release this tomorrow. I was just doing it just to have the records and have, you know what I'm saying, me and my homeboys were just rocking them in the crib and playing them in the cars and at school. And the motivation, I mean, the you know, yeah, the motivation really just came from people around me just, you know, saying, I think you could go with this. Not only do you have a look, you know, I was behind the scenes, but I was still getting a lot of tattoos and I was still in the fashion and you know people thought that I was a rapper already and I had to explain I just make beats but it was you know I took that step forward as you know a test and it fell in love with it. And creating this record was different because of course you know I'm dealing with a major label now in a new situation where you know it's a, a bigger team and you know that comes with more support, but then it also comes with, you know, more people in the hands of what you're doing because, you know, they want to support you and understand and make sure that you understand and it's money behind it and things like that. So, you know, luckily I have, you know, a cool, you know, relationship to just be creative as I want. And, you know, it's no one really stops me from doing anything in the studio, but at the same time, you know, I was introduced to different aspects of looking at the music and, and understanding a different business. So, you know, sometimes I would approach certain records differently and, and understand that if I did something, you know, this way, it could work and benefit, you know, just in the long run, aside from it just being, you know, about me, you know, really speaking out and really touching other people and being able to get, I'm always with anything that's gonna help me get my voice out there more. And I feel like as long as I stay kidding at the end of the day, then it's all good. favorite part would have to be just being able to 
go out and be like, yo, I want to get this producer in the studio or I want to get this artist in the studio. Can we make it happen? And 90, you know what I'm saying, 5% of the time we can make it happen. I think it was dope to just be able to sit down with people that I looked up to growing up, like, you know, Pharrell, and being able to have a session and watch them make beats and then rap on the beats and then feel like, well, is this really happening? You know, those are the dopest moments. And, you know, I think the really, really dope moment was when we just finally got that single right. and. You know, it was even a bigger moment when Chris Brown came and dropped his verse on, I mean, you know, his hook on everything and, you know, just really opened doors for me. The biggest thing that just motivated me to do the album, I think, would have to be just feeling like it was my first time, you know, it was my first project and I was just that hungry, you know, it made me feel like when I was doing the first independent project and when I was doing my first mixtape where I felt like I just needed to show and prove to so many people who Kenny was as an artist and not really be focused on my, you know, just what the music I want to make or what I want to do more so than, you know, really grasp their ears and, and, and get it done and have them understand, you know, where I'm coming from. My favorite song off the album changes frequently, but right now it might have to be Murder featuring Pusha T. I would describe my sound as, you know, uh, you know, it's just well polished. I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm really into quality. Uh, I mean, like I said, I come from being a producer, so I'm, I'm really into how records sound. And, you know, the smallest things can irritate me just in the sound more so than some people are really just focused on, you know, writing verses or writing hooks to where I'm really overall down to the last clap it could bother me. So, you know, it's just... I approach music a little differently and feel like it's just, you know, I always see comments like, Kenny always chooses the best beats. And it's because it's, I'm not really just going in and writing verses and then going in on any beat. It's really, you know, about how that, that music makes me feel. And if I don't get a vibe from it, then it must not really be there. I shouldn't have to add so much to the record. Like, you know, people can vibe out to just instrumentals on their own. Uh, I would describe, you know, my look and style is just, you know, uh, seeing I'm a little clean cut, but at the same time I got the tattoos, so it's, you know, I kind of, you know, got the clean cut, but the, you know, the, the rugged look kind of going on, and I think, you know, it, it makes people curious because I got a lot of tattoos at the same time from just being in the culture, but then, you know, when I started to see how people judged me from the tattoos, it kind of made me want to get more and get more and get more so that people would judge me and have an idea. And then when I would talk to them and they would meet me, it would be something completely different, you know, from what they expected. A lot of the collaborations on the album, you know, I was happy to get from, you know, family. I feel like I didn't really do too much reaching out to people who didn't already reach out to me before or were familiar we hang out already or been in the studio together or anything like that it was really people that I really rock with and wanted to be a part a part of the album or people that I felt like needed you know really good looks that were like my bros and just weren't getting those same looks that I was getting and I felt like they were just as you know as talented so for me you know getting people like King Los and, and MGK on the album and you know L Varner and August Alcina, these are people, you know, a lot of newcomers who are just making names for themselves, but I feel like, you know, we can, you know, do it together and it's such a, I gotta help the new generation also. So I'm not just trying to, you know, go all the way back and grasp the older features that I gotta, you know, do so much for and win people over when I'm rocking with, you know, all the new cats. And, but at the same time, when it's like people like Pusha T who reached out on, you know, his own and say, you have any records for me? And I, you know, knew exactly what I wanted to send him and, you know, with the situation with Chris Brown, where I reached out to him and he wanted to get in the studio and did about three records, you know, that was just, it was, everything has been all love so far, especially Meek Mill, you know, ASAP Ferg, French Montana, these are all people, you know, that I've met prior and, you know, had situations with, and then, you know, later on, we got into the studio finally and made things happen, but it's a surprise to some people when they see it, but not really to us. Wish list of people I want to collaborate with. I think uh, my producer wish list is Timberland and Swiss Beats, and I think um, just my artist wish list. I'm always into getting really big hooks, and, and you know I want to hit the, the Alicia Keys, but then also get the crossovers with the you know Skylar Grays or or you know the Pinks and stuff like that. 
and then you know as far as with the artists I've done so many features with you know a lot of you know mine and, and you know my fans favorite artists and you know I just want to grasp you know newer things I, I gotta you know really just it's about finding those right records and when I have the right record I go that's the artist I want to get on here because they fit this and they will be perfect on this more so than me really thinking about the people I want to get you know on the records like that. I love touring. I feel like it's a hate and love relationship. You, you know, uh, when I'm not on the road, I definitely miss being on the road and miss the excitement with the fans and being on stage and performing new records that, you know, and thinking of ideas and how I can make the stage set this, this, and, and just really incorporate a lot of things to make the fans feel like they're a part of the music. I feel like that's what a lot of the touring is about. But, of course, when you're on the road for so long, you definitely get homesick and after a while you just want to go home and just chill out and not think about nothing. After all the interviews and signing everything and shows back to back for 30 straight days of course you get a little tired but you know it's definitely the life I love to live. My favorite international city might have to be Paris, France right now. I think uh, I've done four sold out shows out in Paris and this recent European tour that I did was like the most insane shows ever. Like those two shows, well it was really the first show was way more insane than the second one, but that show was way more insane than the whole tour, even though, you know, everything was sold out. And it was less people with that show than some of the other shows because of the venue size, but they still made sure that it was crazy, man. Germany is amazing, you know, they treat me so well out there, I feel like it's, it's a place where I, I didn't really understand why at first that they were rocking with me, but I, I, they relate to the music and they, you know, try to understand as much as they can, even with the language barriers. And I feel like they can just see that in the videos, they can get that response and, and understand a little bit more about the records. And I'm number, you know, two, that's my number two market, if you, you know what I'm saying, research out of the United States, which is, which is crazy because, you know, it could be, anywhere it, i mean like you know just for it to be la to germany even it's not even just the united states it goes from city to germany and it's pretty just crazy to see that you know and not really have a full strength of why but know that they're really rocking me out there because i've half of my tours are germany <laughs> like half of the tour will be eight shows in germany the other eight spread around you know so it's crazy Somewhere where I haven't been that I probably want to tour um, would have to be probably Dubai. I think I've heard so many good things about you know people who've gone out there and how they treat you once you get there and the dope just city that they have and underground seats, the hotels. It's crazy stuff out there that I just want to you know be a fan of and see. And I feel like you know stepping into a different world that I feel is still you know you know, uh, a little up to date, I guess, you know, than some of the other places you go out of the country overseas where it seems more country-like. And, you know, I think Dubai seems like it's definitely a little bit more city lifestyle, which I love. My fans are the craziest. I'll say that the, even though the shows in Paris were crazier, my fans in Germany are still the craziest, obviously. You know, saying Germany is somewhere I can't just go to the mall and feel like I'm, you know, safe. This is definitely gonna be a mob, and it's happened, and we ran out the mall and had the car chased in the parking lot before. So. What to expect from a Kid Ink show? Man, fun, exciting, sweaty, energetic, water throwing, loud, screaming, mosh pit, and fun. <laughs> That's what everything you get at a Kid Ink show. Uh, my fans are crazy. It's even crazier overseas. You might get climbing walls and stage diving from other people but me and other things like that. But we definitely have fun. I feel like that's the key for me to show is not a not a point where I'm sitting down, you know what I'm saying, and just giving you, you know, a poetry. It's really like I'm performing for you, you know what I'm saying? I'm jumping around the stage and, and interacting with the audience as much as possible. And I think, you know, I want the fans to feel like they're a part of the show. The next step would have to be, you know, getting back in the studio and just working. I feel like music is always first for me. And the next step is just seeing where we can take it, you know, with the music and to another level. And 
hopefully you know start getting these nominations and awards in the in the pub for just writing so many records or producing for other people and you know really not just being an artist but really being just an overall musician.